After years of imprisonment within the Emerald Nightmare, Arc Druid Malfurion Stormrage has finally returned to the mortal world. Reunited with his love, Tyrande Whisperwind, Malfurion endeavors now to heal the corrupted world tree Teldrassil and rejuvenate the spirit of the Night Elf people. Yet as the great cataclysm shakes the boughs of their colossal tree, the Night Elves brace themselves against the coming storm. As war and destruction close in from all sides, it falls to Night Elves like you to stand strong and protect the enduring legacy of your people. Greetings friends, Nexius here, and today we are going to go straight into the story of Teldrassil. As young Night Elf players in our starting zone, we are training in the Shadow Glen area, and our, one of our first tests will be to assist the restoring of the balance of Teldrassil. There have been many reports of inhabiting Grelkin and spiders becoming increasingly aggressive, so we need to deal with them. Upon further investigation of taking out their aggression, we find out that there's some kind of moss and it's been corrupted with fell. So this would probably explain the infection of the Grelkin and why they've become kind of corrupted and more aggressive. Speaking of the spiders and corruption, when we go into the cave and investigate, we find a furbolg totem that has been corrupting the broodmother and her clutches within the cave. So this would explain why the two particular inhabitants are becoming corrupted. We found some kind of fell infested moss, and we found some kind of furbolg corruption totem. So it appears that some form of fell corruption is infecting the wildlife of Teldrassil. As we continue to investigate this corruption, we will also learn the history of our people, as we are young Night Elves and have to get our education. We learn about the birth of Teldrassil itself, our loss of immortality, and a little bit about Malfurion and Fandral Staghelm when Malfurion disappears for years, you know, basic Night Elf politics. With the Gnarled Pine Furbolgs becoming increasingly aggressive, we are sent to check on one of the Barrow Dens to the west of Dolinar. Druids in the Barrow Dens here are placed into a long dream state to assist Ysera within the Emerald Dream. The dream state leaves these druids defenseless, making it our duty to protect them. So once we go into the Barrow Den, we have to clear out the Gnarled Pine Furbolg to make sure that they don't kill any of the remaining druids if we happen to find any. But once we finish clearing out the Barrow Den, we return to Dolinar and continue our investigation. We discover that not only did we not expel all of Xavius' corruption from Teldrassil years ago, but some of Xavius' satyr still remained. Before we can dispel the last of Xavius' corruption, we must first ensure that it never comes back after we've dealt with it. So what we do is we track down Lord Melanus, one of Xavius' remaining satyrs, and we quickly dispatch him as well as the Grelkin with him in the cave. With Melanus dispatched, now we have to deal with the Furbolgs. We assume, as Night Elves, that once we deal with their leader, Urso the Mauler, the Furbolgs will stop their attacks, at least long enough so that we can deal with the original source of corruption. As a bonus, when we do defeat Ursul the Muller, we also free many of the imprisoned Barrow Den Druids. So, while we're dealing with the Satyr, the Furbolgs, the Spiders, the Grelkin, all of the corrupted wildlife, we have this one Night Elf named Deldalan who's been researching the corruption. It appears that Teldrassil itself is corrupted deep within still, and the tree, Teldrassil, has been slowly trying to cleanse itself, and when it's doing this, it kind of takes this corruption and brings it above the earth so we can actually have some kind of corporeal form to destroy. So, beforehand, we couldn't get to the corruption because it was too deep within Teldrassil, but as Teldrassil is naturally cleansing herself or himself however you prefer the gender of the tree uh, basically it comes up above the earth and we get to deal with it physically so now that we are able to deal with this corruption physically we assist the help of Terendrella, one of the dryads from our original quest earlier which is from the spider cave in shadow glen and basically we go together and between Terendrella giving us a blessing of her loon on top of the moon well water we were getting earlier as we were learning the history of our people we become strong enough to deal with the corruption head on and with the defeat of the remaining xavius corruption Within Teldrassil, we now fully restore the balance to the wildlife and Teldrassil itself. 
So that's pretty much the story of Teldrassil, a very simplistic storyline. Basically just some kind of corruptions infecting the wildlife, we investigate it. First of all, we have to deal with the wildlife to make sure they stop, you know, going crazy. Once we do that, we are able to study the corruption, figure out what it is, where it's coming from. We find out where it's located, and then we deal with it entirely uh, once and for all. So now Teldrassil is completely cleansed. There shouldn't be any more satyr or fell corruption affecting the wildlife. I hope you guys enjoyed this quick review of the Shadow Glen and, of course, Teldrassil Questing Zone. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you next time.